Hello, friends and clients of Walker Gates Bella. I am Jennifer Walker Gates, immigration attorney. And um, in this video, I'm going to be talking with you and with um, our fabulous U visa case manager, Ivan Hinojosa, about traveling with the U visa um, out of the United States and back in, or bringing someone from outside the United States into the United States with a U visa. Um, this is really, really important to know for anyone who has a U visa who can travel with their U visa. And it's also really important to know whether you can travel with the U visa. We have a whole separate video about that. So if you have a U visa and you don't know for sure that you're good to travel or not, please check out our video about whether you can travel with your U visa. But let's say that you can travel with your U visa or you have kids or spouse or someone outside the United States that you want to bring in on their U visa. There are some really important steps that you need to take to make sure that that goes smoothly and that um, you don't get delayed outside the United States. Yvonne uh, Inojosa has been working with us at Walker Gates Bella since 2014. Is that right, yes. Yvonne? Eight years. So um, Yvonne has uh, a tremendous amount of experience working with um, our U visa clients, helping people obtain the U visa, helping, helping people get the temporary work permits, helping people bring their loved ones from outside the United States into the United States with that U visa. Um, and so she is going to share with us today about um, some of the things that she has learned. Yvonne, when somebody wants to come into the United States and they've gotten their U approval from USCIS, what do they need to do um, before they can use that to come into the United States? The first step we'll be doing the uh, DS-260 confirmation to make sure that- Oh, wait, 160 or 260? I'm sorry, 160. <laughs> the DS-160, just to make sure it's a, the application requesting the visa. After that is submitted, uh, the client gets a confirmation number. With that confirmation number, they're able to create an account on a website that will guide them step-by-step step, uh, what they will need to do, how the payment will need to be made, what documents they will need to take with them. And it will also allow them to set the date for their appointment. So the DS-160, um, what is that? It basically, it's an application just asking you for your information and ask you for um, addresses where you've lived. Uh, they just want to know a little bit about your life. And is the application available, like, do you download it and mail it somewhere or how do you file the application? It is available online and it is done online. And it is, DS stands for Department of State. Now, how much does that application cost, Yvonne? It varies <laughs> by country. Um, I believe it's around maybe $160, but some of them are in pesos. Some of them are, are different depending on the country. It gets paid in the local currency of the country where the person is going to the consulate? Yes. Okay. And do those um, people have to pay in a particular location or do they pay online or, do, or how some does that work? Some of them work? pay at particular banks. Some of them may pay online. It just depends on what the instructions state. Okay. But everybody should get specific instructions about how Yes. To they'll guide that, you as to how user. you need to do it. For like Mexico, they give you a little ticket that you need to take with you to the consulate to make sure that you paid. In general, when you, um, what kind of Documents, have you noticed people are required to take with them to those appointments? Definitely a passport um, to, okay. because that's yeah, where the visa will go. I know sometimes because they're children, they don't think that they need a passport. So parents haven't really worked on that, but a passport is very important. Um, birth certificates, um, we usually send them with the approval notices for the U visa, the principal and the derivative. Um, sometimes we'll even send the mom's all, all of mom's documents waiver the i-192 receipt the i-765 approval notice just so they can see that the full case was done and approved awesome yeah and i know for sure when we've had clients that do have a u visa in the united states who are able to travel because they have already triggered every ground of inadmissibility from all of the different entries they're able to travel because all of those have already been waived we always send a copy of the waiver application 
with the client so that if they need to show the officer every every legal ground of inadmissibility that was waived, that's going to be included on that waiver application so they can show the officer that and not have to worry about having to apply for a new waiver because they can see clearly that everything was waived. So that's really important as well. Um, Yvonne, in your experience with that DS-160 appointment, how long does it generally take from the time that you apply, that submit that DS-160 until you can get the appointment at the consulate to go get that visa into your passport? How long does that take? I would say it's at least a few months, probably like three months. And it's probably also just because um, it takes people the time to organize themselves because they're trying to see when you're going to come. They'll ask when you're coming and you have to have all the documents ready. Um, I know right now COVID has really slowed things down. I believe there was a client from Guatemala trying to get an appointment for like the last four to five months and they got it for September. So it was like set out for a while. Right, yes, really good point. So for anyone who has a U visa and is gonna travel outside the United States, taking these steps to get that appointment reserved before you leave is so important. Because um, Yvonne, as you know, if someone has been outside the U.S. for longer than 90 days while they have their U visa, what happens? It, they will not be able to apply for residency in the future or will really struggle. Just something really, really important for our U visas to keep in mind. If you do travel, if you are one of the lucky ones who gets to travel with your U visa and not fear that you're going to get stuck waiting on a waiver, you also don't want to get stuck waiting on that appointment. So really, really important to get that DS-160 filed, get the appointment reserved, and know when you're going to have it when you make your travel plans. Um, because, yeah, being outside for longer than 90 days makes you ineligible down the road for your residency. And so that would be tragic after having to wait so long for the U visa, having to suffer so much for the U visa, um, and then having that opportunity taken away would just be horrible. So uh, we don't want to see that happen to anybody. Um, Yvonne, is there anything else people need to know about handling that appointment at the consulate um, before um, they get that placed? Probably not to get nervous. I know people tend to get nervous at, at these type of appointments, you know, but sometimes they'll ask you a question like, well, why are you going to the United States? Or how did you get this? How did your mother get this? And having the paperwork, it's all there. They understand, I feel like a lot of the officers will understand what's supposed to be done. But I've heard a couple of clients tell me, no, they told me that I needed this document. And I was like, don't worry, you have it with you. Set another appointment mm -hmm. and take it back and be like, here it is. This is what we need. No, I think that's really important. I think everyone gets really nervous at these appointments. It's super mm -hmm. normal and natural to get nervous, but to not freak out, not, um, you know, assume that everything is ruined, not talk too much. Um, those are, those are really important. And I try to well. always tell them, well, I don't try. I do tell them, you know, I-918 will be the U visa. This is this to translate it in the language that they will understand. So they don't panic. I think that is it. Those are the most important points I wanted to cover. And thank you so much, Yvonne, for taking some of your time out of your day to explain this um, for our viewers. It's really, really important for people to know how to make this work um, successfully. And um, whether they're working with us directly or with another attorney or are trying to handle situation immigration stuff on their own, we just want everyone to make sure they have the, the best, most reliable information. So thank you for sharing with us today. You're welcome. And with that, um, everybody take care. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will be back next week with another update and we don't want you to miss it. So with that, have a great week. Take care and goodbye.